and welcome to another episode of the Spotlight Sessions. My name is Ilan Fisher. I head up our nonprofit partnerships at Accessibit, and today I'm actually really, really excited to be having a conversation with Melanie Sadeo. Melanie is the founder and executive director of Connect for Life, a nonprofit in the Ontario area. How's it going, Melanie? Great. Thanks so much for having me. It's my it's my absolute pleasure, and I know you've worked with Sheldon and worked a little bit you know, with, with the accessibility community, but I'd love to know about yourself. You've got like some amazing achievements. You do a lot of public speaking, a lot of advocacy, but I'd love to, if you could kind of take us, you know, from A to Z about, about your life story or your journey and what kind of brought us to the podcast today even. Okay, perfect. So at the age of 21, I had my whole life ahead of me. My dream was to be a teacher, an art teacher to, to boot. And I have suffered a massive stroke that left me completely paralyzed on the left side and legally blind. So you can imagine my life was turned upside down. I had to learn to do everything again, walk, talk, even function, as well as become independent. And then of course, learn how to live my life as a blind woman. And this was a huge adjustment for me. At 21, you have thoughts of how things should be in your life. And I was nowhere near that. But everybody kept telling me, oh, it's okay, you're disabled, you can stay home. I'm like, what? No, I have my whole life ahead of me, so much I want to do. So I went on and I say I had stroke brain, and that's not a medical term, it's a Melanie term, where you think you can do anything, but truly you can't. <laughs> and I was going to achieve my dreams no matter what. So I did just that. I became the first legally blind teacher to graduate in Ontario, but no one would hire me. So I felt very defeated. But along my journey, I met many people with different types of disabilities. And they told me they also wanted to be independent. And I'm like, you can. So that's why I started Connect for Life, a charity that helps individuals with disabilities access education and training programs to help them reach their goal of independence. And that's what brings us here today. I love that story, and I love also the melody term. And we're going to get back to we're going to get back to that, you know, later on in the show. So, Melanie, what is the work that Connect for Life is doing? You said you're kind of connecting um, people with, with disabilities with education and training opportunities. Tell me a little bit about, about that, and also a little bit about your role as well. Okay, absolutely. So, as I mentioned, I founded Connect for Life because I saw there was a need after going to Teachers College. And this was my first experience with education with a disability because all of my previous education had been cited. And I saw there was huge gaps. People didn't know how to accommodate individuals with disabilities. And there was this mindset that, oh, people with disabilities can't be a teacher, can't do this. And I didn't want anyone else to experience what I had gone through. Mm -hmm. So with Connect for Life, we can help bridge that gap. So if somebody wants to take training through us, that's great. We offer life skills training and it's personalized to meet their individual needs. Broadcast training, we have a radio broadcast training program and accessible voice and broadcasting. I love that. Public speaking and so much more. But also if they want to take a course at post-secondary school or any school, we can be that advocate for them to make sure that their needs are being met at that venue, making sure that they are successful through the regular school if their support is not provided by that institution. M Melody, I, I really wanted to drill down on the idea of the training, you know, in radio and broadcast. What are some of the skills that, you know, people with disabilities can learn about media and what have you also learned about, you know, media? Broadcasting. Well, it's interesting because when I started Connect for Life, I also started Voices for Ability Radio, an online radio station for about by people with disabilities. And it was an opportunity for individuals to showcase their talents with radio broadcasting. People with disabilities have so many amazing abilities and talents that they want to explore. And when I started that, I reached out to colleges and universities that had a radio broadcasting program and asked them how many people with disabilities did they have in their program, and they said none. I said, why? And they said, well, we don't have the right equipment or they, we can't spend the extra time they need. So I created this 20-week program to help individuals learn the basics wow. about radio broadcasting. So everything from the history of it, how to write for radio, how to use your voice appropriately, how to interview people, as well as how to create storytelling. We talk about podcasting, editing, and all those fun things. 
alongside partnering with people from the industry coming in as guest speakers. Individuals have the opportunity to create their own podcast, a demo reel, and of course, connect with people in the industry. It's amazing the talents and the work that has come out of the course. And you know what? If they so choose, they can go to those institutions now with that demo reel saying, I have the basics, I know I can do this, this is what I need to be successful. So that's kind of the idea of it. And I love it. It's my favorite program, I'll be honest, a little biased, but it's my favorite. That is that is so awesome. And especially, you know, myself getting into the podcast space and the opportunities that I've been providing the people I've gotten to meet. I, I really think of, you know, having a podcast is just a great way to meet people. And like, if, if I didn't have a podcast, I wouldn't be able to have those conversations. So for, for more people in your community to be able to broaden their horizons, have more conversations, have more opportunities, that's really what it's all about. And that's really, you know, media done, done right. Out of your class, do you have any, you know, um, really special achievements or stories that, that came out, you know, a success story even? Yes, a number of them. So I'll just share two, one extreme to the other. So we had somebody join me in our very first class in 2015. Okay, so I'm dating myself now, but yes, a while back. And they came in and said, I want to be a sports writer. I'm going to be a sports broadcaster. That's all that he wanted. And I said, please just keep an open mind. Okay, he took the course and one of his very first interviews uh, with celebrity was Bob McCowan, sports broadcaster. And really, truly, Bob was great with him, but he took over the interview. And I said, so what did you learn from this experience? And he's like, uh, I need to control my interviews. You think? <laughs> and then Bob also shared some really great advice with him. He said, oh, I'm going to work for Rogers Communication. And Bob said, well, if you do, you'll be getting me coffee. Perhaps you want to try a practice, like a internship with a smaller entity where you get to try more things. So in the that a client actually spent his internship with us at Voices for Ability, and he learned about so many other aspects, and took over hosting our sports show. And after he'd done it for about a year and a half, I said, "Why don't you pitch this show to Accessible Media Inc., which is." Um, broadcaster that focuses on or really delivers content for the blind and partially sighted community and he did and they picked it up and he was hired by them so that's one huge thing everybody's successes are different we've had many graduates create their own podcasts and are now monetizing on that which is incredible and then my other success story i'll share is our current station manager at voices he came to me and he has a brain injury and he's like, I just want to get my life back. I need some sort of structure. And he has a great radio voice. And through taking the course, he learned a lot about himself, a lot about the industry. And now he's taking over and is managing our station. He has great content. He has three podcasts of his own. He's just amazing. And I don't know what I'd do without him. He helps me run the broadcasting course, he, the station. So there's so many successes. I could sit here all day and tell you, Elon, but I will just leave it at those two. Amazing. And on, on the topic of successes, um, I, I've no doubt that you have challenges in your life, but what is your, you know, greatest flagship achievement, be it in profession and connect for life or even even personally on the journey that you've been on? Okay, so lots of challenges. Absolutely. I have my blind days, another Melanie term. <laughs> and you know, when nothing seems to go right, it takes me 10 times longer to do things than it should. And I get frustrated and sometimes you want to give up. But my family says that I'm stubborn. I like to say determined, Elon, it sounds much nicer. Determined's so, a better spin than, than stubborn. I'm, I'm, so right. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that somebody next time somebody okay. calls me stubborn. I definitely, definitely <laughs> determined. And again, becoming the first legally blind in Ontario was a huge one. But I also decided that I wanted to share my story with the world not just about me, but so other people can relate to the fact that unforeseen change happens in our lives all the time. So I published my first book in 2019, My Unforeseen Journey, Losing Sight, Gaining Vision. So that was my personal um, accomplishment. Plus I'm able to connect with crowds across the globe virtually, now thank goodness for Zoom, and different platforms like that, and share my story to help empower other individuals with disabilities, as well as educate and advocate for those individuals uh, with employers 
about the accessibility and the importance of hiring people with disabilities. Now, Connect for Life has had so many accomplishments, but I think our biggest one was last year during the pandemic, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. We received funding to be able to offer our programs virtually, and we were able to reach over 200 people in the year through our programs. And during the pandemic, many people were isolated and very lonely and depressed. So we were able to make those connections for our clients. And I don't think we would have done that otherwise, believe it or not. I know we do great programs, but this way they were able to do it from the safety of their home, staying away from COVID, as well as connecting with people across Ontario. It was great. That's that's really epic. I love I love the first story and the and the second one kind of pieces it together as well into really what I wanted to really get to, which is what is the Melanieism when we're talking about your definition of what accessibility is? Because everybody has obviously a very different and broad vision of what accessibility is, but I would love to know more about what accessibility is, is a melanism. Okay, so accessibility, if we want to get technical, you know, is the design of a product or service to ensure that people with disabilities are being, having equitable access to everything, programs, services, products. But for me, what it's all about is asking, how can I best support you? What do you need to be successful? So providing those accommodations or that screen reader or large print aspect, or even a ramp, whatever it is to set somebody up for success on a level playing ground so that they can, whether it's for the workplace or just in any community activities, participate fully just as they are, fully excited, accepted and included just as they are. The disability becomes an afterthought. We're focusing on the individual's abilities. I, I love that and I also that that's like the more and more I learn about this journey and the more I think about you know the term people with disabilities it's the disability is you know just a facet of that grander personality and really who you are and that really brings me to you know my, my last question before I ask how people can get involved into connect for life which is what is the message that you have to the business community because you you must be interacting with the business community through oh, education I, I, through um, your outreach programs and through through your media effects. So I, I'd love to know what your message to them is on how they can best cater to your community. When I reach out to employers, I, I start the conversation with asking, are they inclusive? Well, I don't scratch their head. What do you mean? <laughs> and I just say, okay, so how many people with disabilities do you have working for you? Well, none. That's usually the answer I get. Why is that? Well, you know, so then I talk to them about what good business sense it makes to be accessible, not only to hiring individuals with disabilities, but to looking at their customer base, because individuals with disabilities in Canada have over $1 million in spending power. And if you don't have that ramp to get into your store or your website is not accessible for people with vision loss or any other disability to be able to purchase something online, you are missing it on a huge pool of money, not to mention a huge pool of talented individuals to hire. And then of course I go into the many different myths and misconceptions of what that means for them as a business owner and talk about all the benefits. And you know, there's so many, and again, this is a topic I'm passionate about, but the reality is just to open yourself up to new experiences, ask questions if you're unsure, because it is scary for a lot of employers or business owners if they're unsure of offending people or doing something that's incorrect. Ask somebody with a disability to help you with this because we're the ones that are wanting the products, the services that you're offering or the opportunities for that job. And if you ask the right questions, you're always going to have people support. So that is definitely something I would say to them. Look at the business, what business sense it makes, how it's going to benefit your bottom line, but also how you can become a more inclusive business because people and customers will shop at your business if you are inclusive. Because I can tell you my family always go to businesses that are inclusive or accessible, always. And that's a lot of money that people will be missing out on if they aren't accessible. I love that answer and I also think it comes down to just you know having genuine curiosity not being afraid and thinking of the opportunities really that they're out there it's it's 
a massive untapped market and the, the more we can have these conversations the more we can we can drive that to a more equitable place so melanie just the last thing i want to ask is how can people get involved in connect for life in the, your amazing initiatives in your programs even connect with you yeah absolutely so connect the number four life.ca is our website and now we have an amazing widget on there it makes it accessible we're so excited for that <laughs> thank you accessibility and we are available via the email uh, as well people can reach out to me directly at melanie m-e-l-a-n-i-e at connect the number four life.ca and again anything of course social media we have facebook we have twitter we have instagram i don't think it's as active as it could be but yes reach out we're there we usually get back to people within the day or two um on social media platforms but email definitely next day and yeah, please ask questions. That's what we're here to help and support. If people are looking for information, we're happy to send them anything that they need. Awesome. Melanie, again, I want to thank you so, so much for being on the Spotlight Sessions. I really took a lot from this conversation. I'm sure our listeners will too. And I look forward to our next collaboration. I'm really glad we had this. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure. Cheers.